everyone. I'm Maggie Boland, and welcome to this week's episode of The Signature Show. We have an exciting show for you today, including a performance from the cast of Signature's planned but postponed production of Hair, plus a behind the scenes look at Signature Vinyl, a very special concert that you'll be able to view from the comfort of your home very soon. To start the show this week, Matthew Gardner got to sit down with two Tony Award winners to talk about their work together on Broadway and at Signature. I want to welcome to the Signature show two Tony Award winners, director and choreographer Kathleen Marshall and scenic designer Derek McLean. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. So the two of you have worked together on several Broadway shows, including Pajama Game and Anything Goes and Nice Work If You Can Get It, plus various other projects, uh, including Diner at Signature Theater in 2014. On The Signature Show, I've been talking a lot with some of our favorite artists about collaboration. I wanted to start at the beginning and I wanted to ask Kathleen, uh, how did you meet Derek and what was the first project you all worked on together? I think the first project we did together was Violet at Playwrights Horizons, which I choreographed right. and um, and Susan Shulman directed. And this was before Playwrights Horizons was renovated. So uh, if you remember, it was that tiny, tiny little theater with no stage right. I mean, the theater was in an old brownstone. So it was a little bit like the old signature space, but even smaller. That was a really special show and special collaboration. You've worked together many times since. What is it about him as a designer that just makes you want to continue to work with him, Kathleen? Well, besides being a sort of, you know, incredible visual artist and uh, a brilliant designer, Derek cares about the whole show. You, know, you, you always feel like, especially as a, a director and choreographer, you always feel like you need to have uh, collaborators that are passionate and smart and care about everything and that hopefully if you're you know going off the rails they'll perform some kind of an intervention um <laughs> and, but i um because he cares about everything he cares about the story he cares about the characters he cares about the the not just the visual elements but the the heart of the show and just really knows how a musical needs to move and, and look and behave. Thank you for that, Kathleen. <laughs> Eric, why do you like working with Kathleen? First of all, she's just really talented. I think that's the number one, uh, that's the number one thing. She's a great leader. She knows how to, to uh, rally a group of people towards a difficult, complicated um, goal and uh, how to sort of organize, how to break that down and organize it, break it down into parts and, and sort of get everybody uh, moving towards that one thing. And then she really values the opinions of her collaborators, which is obviously, as a designer, is hugely, uh, hugely important. Is there a project that you are most fond of that you worked on together? It might be Pajama Game, um, because that was, you know, that was a show that people didn't have great expectations for. You know, they thought it was sort of an old chestnut and maybe had a good score and was fun. And I don't, I think they didn't expect it to be as, as vivid and sort of exciting and sort of sexy as it was. You know, I think they thought it was going to be sort of a little sort of old fashioned from the way it looked and moved right from the get go. Um, and in collaboration with Marty Pakladinas and Peter Kazarowski, I think, you know, it was much more vibrant and modern, even though it was still set in the 1950s. I think it was very much more modern and vibrant than anybody thought it was going to be. Well, I remember when I first read it, um, you know, I just read the original script from 1954 and I called up Kathleen and I, I was sort of a little alarmed. Um, and I said, I, I, you know, I don't know how we're going to do that opening scene. It's just, I mean, it's so dull. It's so long and nothing happens. And, and she said, don't worry, that's, uh, she said, I have an idea how to completely rewrite that. And she did, and she basically took that, that, that all that sort of exposition at the beginning and cut it into, you know, cut it into, into music, into the song, the pajama game, and made it into this thing that was incredibly uh, delightful. In the case of Diner, you know, uh, that was based on an iconic film Derek, you just designed a gorgeous set for another musical based on a film, Moulin Rouge. Film is such a visual medium. Do you find that those films influence how you approach things? 
you know, chances are if you're making a, a, a musical or a play out of something that was a movie, it's people love the movie. I mean, that's usually the case. Um, and so it's an interesting challenge because you want to surprise people. You want people to, to, to enter this on its own terms. You don't want them to sit there and, just, and say, God, I wish I was watching the movie instead. You want your own show to take over and, and create its own world and become its own thing and have its own surprises. But you also don't want to disappoint. You want to meet some of the expectations that they had about the movie that they loved. And so it's sort of trying to figure out a balance between those. I still um, think to this day, one of the most exciting sets that Signatures had in its space was was the diner set. It was so gorgeous and it was just, I waited, it took my breath away every single time. And I saw it, you know, dozens and dozens of times between tech and rehearsal. But every time that that, that those diner walls would split and the diner would come down towards us and with with all of that detail, Derek understands that we, that, you know, sets are our playgrounds. They're our jungle gyms and so, he creates sets that are so playful and that actors love to play in. What to you makes for a successful collaboration? Musical theater is such a big, messy collaboration, you know, with everybody, including the, you know, the, the writers, the designers, the producers, the actors. And I sort of feel like, you know, I, I, I think a number one, a positive attitude, that also that the best idea in the room should win. Um, no matter where it comes from. And you may you may have something set in your head, but if another idea sort of comes along that sort of sounds sounds exciting, then go with that, you know, that then let and, and to let everybody's ideas be heard. And um, you know, as a designer, you really want a director who's going to um, who's going gonna push you. You don't want somebody who's just gonna sit there and say, Great, we're done. You want you know, you want you want somebody to help you make it uh, help you make it better and um, and challenge you to do better and that so I think that's sort of that's key to key to a good collaboration. I want to thank you both for talking to me today and these conversations about collaboration have been a little bit selfish on my part because it just gives me an opportunity to like peer into the minds of some artists that I really admire so so thank you for everything. Hi, I'm Rafael Bueno, Signature Theater's Senior House Manager. Just recently, I achieved a special milestone with Signature. I celebrated my 20th anniversary of being a Signature employee. Prior to that, I've been a patron, subscriber, and volunteer. What initially brought me to Signature was a unique take on musicals and innovative productions in such a small space as that garage, and how the artistic staff has kept that sense of creativity when we opened up in Shirlington in 2007. One of the reasons why I love working here is interacting with the audience and seeing how they love Signature and our productions as much as every person who works here does. One of the other special things about Signature is its family of artists. It's always a joy watching artists like Donna Migliaccio, Nova Y. Payton, Tracy Lynn Oliveira, and Will Gartshore take on several different roles over the years. Here are two of Signature's favorite artists, Natasha Diaz and Vinnie Kemsky, recreating their performance of I Don't Know How to Love Him, from Signature's 2017 production of Jesus Christ Superstar, directed by Joe Calarco.
new segment on The Signature Show, I want to introduce our audiences to some of the most exciting artists working in the theater today. First up, we have a choreographer who's choreographed for Beyonce, Kelly Rowland, Janelle Monet, and Jennifer Lopez. She's also choreographed for the hit television show, The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. And soon, she'll take the theater world by storm, choreographing the musical adaptation of The Devil Wears Prada. Please welcome to the show, James Alsop. How are you? I'm elated after that introduction. You make me sound way cooler than I am. <laughs> You're the coolest. So how did your love for theater and dance and, and film and, and the arts in general, how did it all begin? I don't remember a time where I wasn't in love with dance. It literally started from when I was born. I came out of my mama's womb. I was smacked to make sure I was alive and I did a pirouette. So I have a twin and I have three older sisters. And at six years old, I was in the basement with them and literally, five, six, seven, eight, and the whole time, I'm like, no, do this on five. I was six years old. And I was like, okay, maybe I should do this for a living. <laughs> and I would just watch the music videos and I would see the award shows and I would see the opening numbers by like Debbie Allen, or incredible numbers by Bob Fosse from that people would pay homage to. And I'm like, I wanna do that. Who made that up? I wanna be the person that made it up. So then I just stuck with it. I researched dance and, the love, I just ignited the love when I was like, between the ages of six to nine. It was always there, because I was always dancing. But the flame took off in, around them. <laughs> so can you tell me a little bit about your journey from dancer to choreographer? I found out who Tina Landon was. And Tina Landon, at the time, choreographed a lot of iconic moments for Jada Jackson uh, from her Janet album to her Velvet Rope album. Then I found out that Tina Landage, who was also dancing in the video, choreographed it. And I was like, what? Because she did all these interviews on MTV. And I wanted to be her. So I actually never really wanted to be a dancer. I, yet again, I still wanted to be a choreographer. And then it hit me later on. I was like, but Tina's dancing. And then Paula Abdul, she was incredible. She, I was like, she's dancing. I was like, I wonder who choreographed her. She did. <laughs> So when that happened, I was like, oh, I have to be a dancer in order to be a great choreographer. So then I started training really late. I was 14 when I took my first dance class and I moved to LA to really train full time. And here we are. And then I became a choreographer in 2010. I was in a movie, uh, Leave It On The Floor, streaming now. <laughs> and I was working with Frank Gatson, who's an incredible creative and creative director and choreographer. And I ended up being able to choreograph two scenes in the film as well. And that's when he, he lit my career as a choreographer. I'm so thankful to him. Because after one of the scenes, he was like, you gotta show Beyonce. And I was like, I gotta show who do what? And uh, then that snowballed into a career as a choreographer for me. And then that was to start working on Run the World. You know, you have a long list of, of um, things that you've choreographed in film and television. But you're fairly new to the theater world, yeah? Like that's been a, a, a recent venture for you. Has theater always been on your list of dreams? Absolutely. When I was still in college, I, I had the list that I wrote. And there's a list of things that I wanted to accomplish in the dance world. And choreographing a Broadway show is on that list. I mean, granted, it's way down there because I never thought it was going to be a thing for me. <laughs> but it's on my list and I'm like, are you kidding me? And when I got offered The Devil Wears Prada, I was like, oh, all shows, that's gonna be my first one? <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was definitely a dream of mine, but it's one of those dreams that you think is like a pipe dream. And to see it come to life and to know that it's happening, it's like, I could have pinched myself 76 times. It's like, I can't, I can't believe I can say this to you out loud. I am excited that hopefully one day soon, you and I, uh, can collaborate on something together at Signature. It's gonna happen, we're gonna make it happen. This is an absolute must. It's such a pleasure to see you. And thank you so much for thinking about me and having me. I'm truly, truly thankful and humbled that you even thought of me. It's so good to see you again. Good to see you too, Jane. Another choreographer Signature loves is Jared Grimes. Here with a special message is Jared about an exciting opportunity. What's up, Signature Theater World? My name is Jared Grimes, and I'm coming here to you today 
to let you know that on October 27th, I'll be teaching a class for the Signature Theater community, and you can register at signaturetheater.org. I got my start at the Signature Theater. My first musical was Jelly's Last Jam. Then I went on to choreograph the Scottsboro Boys, the musical. And then after that, I went on to choreograph Ain't Misbehaving. And I've had nothing but wonderful experiences at the Signature Theater. And I'm so excited to come back and teach to you guys. I can't wait. Show up. It's going to be all about my new song and track that came out going Sammy Davis Jr. that just released on all musical platforms and the videos up on YouTube and my IG page. Get ready to get down and get ready to move and shake. See you soon. Hey, everybody, it's Rachel Lamar, and I was in the world premiere of Gun and Powder at Signature Theater. I'm here today to tell you about a special new project that Signature will release on film the beginning of November. It is a tribute featuring songs from the great Stevie Wonder. Billy Joel, Barry Gordy, and many, 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 many more. So Signature has gathered 20 of its favorite artists, including myself, and we've all teamed up with the great Mark G. Meadows and the movement, and we've all put our own little spin on these special, exciting songs. So we hope that you enjoy it, we hope that you love it, and we want you to sit back and enjoy this special teaser until we get back to you. And remember, Ration Nation on your side. sales and grassroots marketing manager. In March, our entire season came to an abrupt end. The world premiere production Camille Claudel was canceled along with the rest of our season's programming. This past summer, we were planning an awesome production of the iconic rock musical Hair. Hair is a celebration of peace, love, and life while also addressing the serious issues that we faced in the 1960s and that we continue to face today, including racism environmental destruction, poverty, war, and gender equality. We'd hoped this production would be a reminder to all of us about how important it is to use our individual and collective voices to affect change. Here to sing one of the musical's most iconic songs is the entire cast who would have been featured in our production of Hair. Enjoy. Coats, wearing smells from laboratories, facing a dying nation, a moving a paper fantasy, listening for the new taught lies, with supreme visions of lonely tunes. Somewhere inside, some finger is a rush of greatness. Who knows what's in front of our lives I fashion my future on films and space silence tells me secretly everything Look. 
coats Wearing smells from laboratories Facing a dying nation Of moving paper fantasies Listening for the neutral lies With supreme visions of lonely truth Singing our sweet songs on a spider web Sitar Thanks for watching this week's episode of The Signature Show. We'll be back in November with a very special episode in which we will announce our upcoming season. Until then, make sure to buy tickets to our filmed concert signature vinyl on our website, sigtheater.org, and check out all the other masterclasses and special events available to you. As always, thank you so much for your continued support. We need it now more than ever. To send us off in the spirit of the Halloween season, here is a spooky treat from Tracy Lynn Oliveira. When the spooks have a midnight jamboree, they break it up with fiendish glee. Ghosts are bad, but the one that's cursed is the headless horseman. He's the worst when he goes a jogging across the land. Oh, He don't like it and he's really burned He swears to the longest day he's dead He'll show them that he can get ahead See what I did there? He likes them little, he likes them big